Alex and I, Housing Stig, Alex and I were discussing Sasha Yanchin's video yesterday about how the UK government is lying to you about inflation. If you haven't seen that video, go and watch it. Really go and watch it because uh, he basically argues that the UK government, ha he's got evidence there on the government website that they are deliberately understating um, CPIH. They even admit it. Uh, to influence inflation. Go go watch that video because he explains it and he shows the he shows the numbers. Anyway, we were discussing it, and I got a text from Alex this morning, which I just think bears reading out. So we were talking about Sasha's Sasha's video, and and Alex says, and by the way, Alex asked me to say before I read this out that this is a thought experiment, not a guarantee. But here we go. He clearly says that people being paid the minimum wage will get the 10% raise and those above them will therefore demand increases so as not to be seen as the same as the guys on minimum wage. He doesn't say the guys, but I'm not using that word. <laughs> he even says that they may receive more than 10%. Given the circa 1.6 million workers on minimum wage, that's an extra roughly 3 billion on wage bills annually. Add in the 3 million approximately just above minimum wage on real living wage, that's another nearly 7 billion. So employers would have to find roughly 10 billion extra for wages a year. That's the equivalent of 295,000 people earning the average UK wage of £34,000 a year. Hmm. Yet, the employer is getting no improvement in productivity, or profitability, obviously. In fact, it's making it worse. They're just paying more. So, they either accept this and lose profit on sales, or they raise prices, which people already can't afford, hence falling revenues in most sectors, or they sack people. The people who are sacked... Because remember, they are reforming universal credit and the assessment for eligibility based on your fitness to work and whether you have indeed been working, will be receiving very little money. Sorry, summarise that. The people who are sacked will be receiving very little money in way of benefits. Which is how we get to destitution and death in poverty. Or, as I wrote under the quasi texts, jobless will congregate at town squares and be driven to work sites, agricultural, infrastructure, etc., each day, as chosen by the government, in order to earn a portion of their universal credit. The alternative is universal basic income, which we simply don't have the money for, until we have CBDCs, which is why it's going to be so unpleasant for the next decade. Shruggy emoji. I thought that was an interesting take. I thought you guys would enjoy hearing that. See you on the next one. Bye. By the way, who calls the property maintenance company subsidence? I, I think that's brilliant. Subsidence. Saving one property at a time right next to me at Heston Services. Brilliant.